Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm OP and in today's episode we'll be going over some of the best highlights from today's LCK 2024 Spring Split matchup. Without further ado, let's dive straight into the action. Azia as Lucid and Sponge hit each other with moves. A they little do. Bit. Yeah. They're not gonna lead to a whole lot more, at least initially. We might have an oh. actual fighter aiming. Does have his Kraken Slayer already making his way over. He's ahead of the curve here. So DRX need to be a little bit careful if they do want to commit to contesting this. If you have the ultimate, it is just scrubs. It is. It's so just scrubs, guys. I don't know whether we're going to be sacrificing everything oh, for this. Oh, we're 5 for grubs. All right, yeah, we're going to get the knockup onto Sponge on the side of D+. King in now trying to close the gap as the World Ender does come in. But over the wall they go. Pleta spits out the Sejuani Empress Divide, wipes the floor with them, though, and I don't think that's exactly what DRX wanted in this moment because Pleta got pulled all the way back in after using the Devourer. I'm not... I blame DRX for trying to go a little bit harder, trying to secure the second dragon, get themselves a little bit closer to a potential soul, and to keep the soul for D plus further away. Emperor's Divide gonna throw back this uh, Yone, and the interruption is too good! Ignite was ticking, but Showmaker says that kill is mine. And now Lucid throwing out the Nature's Grasp, really nice. Little Flame Chomp is there from Teddy to get them out of the way, but is it actually going to save them? The Devourer coming in as Lucid's going to explode, but he has the Flash. Kellen also able to battle dance oh. around entrance to get out, but Rascal, he comes in. The Arcane Smash is decent, but now Showmaker, he's found the back line, and now Teddy's dead. Pleta should be next to go down, and Rascal is running as fast as he can. But can he 1v3? That's the question, and maybe the answer is going to be yes, unless Showmaker is tanky enough. Oh. And he gets the kill, but Rascal is going to go down. It's messy. It's that was chaotic. Some sort. Not entirely sure what was happening. It's been a very long time, and as I just m managed to confirm, I am old, so can't remember things that have happened uh, even relatively <gasps> recently. Oh! Whoa. Okay, so uh, inhibitor turret went down. Oh god, we're investigating once again. Um, so what has happened? Um, an inhibitor turret fell. No extra kills, because I do remember that it went from 7 to 11, and I thought that that was funny because of 7-11, you know? Oh, I didn't know we saw what happened. Showmaker didn't die, and then they just... Yeah, 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 but then he did, but like, it was already doomed. And then he bought him a Jive. Sponge is alcove gaming. Way over as well. Kingen's in the mid lane. D+, plus. they are just going to back away. They can kill this ward if they would like to. Kellen is hunting, though. They know that Sponge is in the vicinity. If they catch him, it's almost a guaranteed Baron. Yeah, no, Grand dead. Entrance going to come on uh, through. Um, there are a lot of bad guys in the vicinity. Can Secret Agent Sponge make it? No, he can't. He's dead. He's very... Well, it's going to take a bit. Sponge! There it goes. No! Sometimes you got to go for a Hail Mary, Chronicle. Uh, because it is. Because we voted for him unanimously. All right, there's Nature's Grasp. It is going to uh, find a few members, and we're looking for a flank angle. All right, Satab. Right on top of an enemy ward, but does it even matter as the Emperor's Divide comes down yet again? Once more, Showmaker is tanking every ability that flies towards him, and he straight up does not care even a little bit. And now it's Kingen that is raining hell down on top of them. Teddy able to do a little bit there as the charm does come on through from Kellen. Really beautifully done here, and it's a clean sweep for D+. And any argument, I mean... Besides you. Yeah, and I, I, just, I just really like Tank Azir. Uh, as speaking of which, he is going to run away from Rascal here. Doesn't quite have his ultimate back up and available. This is going to take some time, guys, and uh, he is not going to survive. Um, yet more. He's it off. He's an abyssal mask. He does. Um, he now has four items, and Sponge is going to look to engage on Kingen. I'm not sure about that one. Showmaker does turn up now. As my God. This damage is absolutely ridiculous. The Brambles are going to smash Teddy into the entirety of D+. And there goes the rest of the base. This gold lead is like one of the largest that we've seen. It is not even 26 minutes yet. It's more like an hour and 26 minutes as the Nexus will go down in what is actually just game one in this series. We have so much more league ahead of us today, Atlas. We absolutely do. As uh, Showmaker is going to get up, Cameraman. Nocturne has a lot of backline threat. You have the possibility for Teddy to go in aggressively with, or for a Platter Rider to go in aggressively with, uh, with him. Teddy has good follow up. I like 
Nautilus and Varus really. And as you say, instead just take all of them. Just take a decent amount of time if you're not playing Rel or something with a really, really insane clear, like uh, for example at the brand beforehand. But for now, DK pulling ahead is yeah. Flash. Flash actually going to go off. Showmaker's positioning just absolutely doomed. Brilliant Emperor's Divide from Satab and it catches him. Some summoners might be looking towards a second dragon as in about a minute and a half we will have the cloud. So unfortunately for you, no cloud soul Aww. on the table here. That's okay. Emperor's Divide comes That's down it. dead again though and he's just dead. Does manage to get a little bit of a fear but He's going to get feared right back, and Satab, that is two on the board already. I love it when a plan comes together. We talk about infinite entrance by Lucid, who might go for a regank here. Next wave crash. Spongy isn't close to this. Yep, there is a flash available, but the bubble is still going to connect. Depth charge is decent. The hook going to land, and that is Whoa! going to secure the kill. Beautifully played by Pleta to see the angle. But now Showmaker is coming in as well. There is the crushing Morris Teddy. Able to get the flash off. Another turret shot is flying in, is now aiming. Oh, He's I know desperate about that. to try and lock this one down, but it is not. And then you go in, and you have a front line, you have great CC, you have a lot of consistent damage, you have a backline threat. For DK, it is a lot harder. They don't actually have great ways to start fights. Oh, there's a flash hook. The paranoia comes down as well. The Hui's ult is getting some work done, but aiming just explodes. And Teddy, he's on the board now as well, getting his revenge for all of that attention in the early game. And this should be soul point. And early on, at least contest this momentarily. King and trying to stack up that Navar oh. as well as he hops over the wall. And Showmaker just trying to be frustrating. Nature's Grasp comes in. Rascal taking a fair bit of damage, but he can also afford to do so as DRX. They're going to get out of the pit. And D Plus just standing their ground despite the 80 carry deficit. They are still going to be able to grab themselves this dragon. Big thing there is the poke from Showmaker. So no opening up of the base. At least too much as King has found Sponge and will now just throw the wallop down. Does manage to at least spell shield one thing, but he's just throwing rocks all over the place. The wallop, the bubble, and the kill almost there for aiming, but Kingen says, nah, mate, this one's mine. And Kingen is taking map. Checking in on the bottom lane. We do have Meganar now coming in as, all right, Paranoia going to come through. The all out is down as well, as it's a great spell shield to avoid the nah, and there goes. The top laner from D+, really nicely played here by DRX. And we already mentioned how important Kingen is. They just turn on him, take him down, and now D+, are in a bit of trouble if they want to try and contest this. Quetta moving in, doesn't waste any time. He flashes, gets the ulti off, onto aiming, but where's the follow-up? It doesn't exist, because they just bought the space to guarantee the dragon. I kind of like this. It's now Lucid. Just the window here for DRX, yeah. when it times out, Certainly could be. Pleta is just going to go for it now, though, as the tree is standing his ground. There is the Nah, and the ultimate as well from Satab going to be used on just Kingin. Can they actually secure what? it? can with Satab Sand Soldiers. That's how you do it. You just rely on a Feta's ear to secure your objective. Invested everything to trying to kill this Maokai. Which didn't end up working out as Teddy. Oh, um, Teddy's ganking Kingin. An interesting maneuver. As Kingen thinks that he's found him, he might still have, even with Sponge in the area. Teddy trying to get the damage down, kiting him decently right now. Hail of Arrows to slow up the Gnar, and finally he hits Mini again so he can actually get some autos off. A one-for-one -one trade, still not the worst deal. Yeah, and then they're getting low. And Teddy actually gonna go back. Wait, the heal plant. Yeah, he's going to he's gonna eat some of these honey fruits. And now, Ultimate Torum is back e up. Plus, uh, they're taking control of this dragon. Okay, Kingen throwing out the boomerang. Piercing out Kingen! Kingen as well. Pleta has found the hook. They found Kingen, and he's going to be taken down. No Megana for you. Oh. And it's another kill for Satab. Rascal just launches himself into the fight as this. The Teddy takes him down. Now the depth charge is planted on top of aiming. They have themselves the Elder Drake. And DRX are going to do it. The might of the dragon launches out of this Cassante. And DRX will march up the mid lane. We're going to a game number. The turnaround was pretty consistent as well, right? Like this whole game, they found control. They mitigated the attempts from D+. 
They played some good League of Legends. They're going to take down the Nexus turrets, and we're going to be heading to a game number three. DRX, after what was one of the most one-sided games that we've seen this week, Depends says, how you think about it, it's either one of the most one-sided or the longest. DRX, this is a great use of R5. They have two great, or actually three if you add all the uh, ball delivery systems. You have a really strong core. The one thing... Judge actually going to come out here. It's a fair bit of value. Lucid finds the Q. And now Kellen could be in trouble. He's tanking the turret. I don't know about that one. Flat, flat, not going to be enough damage there from Teddy as no uh, the last one was in the air. And they are going to guarantee this kill. I don't know whether Kellen necessarily needed to flash in that moment as the Q is going to connect. And there is the drive-by from Lucid. He'll collect that one. And aiming, even able to get another plate. That's so he felt relatively safe. Maybe Safer makes a mistake, and there is an opportunity there. Yeah. Uh, so All right, TP. Death Dutch coming in. You can see Aiming, he'll get devoured. Now Lucid looks for the opportunity, but I believe missed the Q. Now Aiming's going to be flashing. Unstoppable force from Rascal into the back line. It's a decent double knock up there from Kellen. And now Kingen realizes there are five bad guys in the area, and he's going to have to try and Cassante his way out of here. And I don't even think Cassante is going to be capable of that. A Chew says Teddy as he goes maybe a little bit too far forward. Lucid tries to get out. Massive knock ups from Kellen. Teddy is limping out of the fight, and the Dawning Shadow is what finishes Lucid? off. Lucid trying to get in there. Man, is this Tempest Crypt? Oh, not quite enough as Pleta. He makes his way out. It's a bloodbath in the bottom lane, and it's DRX. A bit of value here, but the Rift Herald is going to be popped down. Let's see whether that's going to be enough to open the mid turret. And Kellen is actually just going to drive it. Oh, look at that. Able to get a cute little knock up there. But now he could be in trouble. PP. Not sure he's going to be able to abyssal dive out of this one. Achu is going to do a fair bit of work there as they're just continuing on to Kellen. But underneath the turret goes Satab. Aiming taking a lot of damage, but will be able to lock down the kill on the Orianna. And now Spongy manages to go one for one. But Plet is in trouble now. And Lucid is all over the place. Q going to connect there from Showmaker to lock that one down. And in the meantime, there's some sort of fight happening in this top lane. Flat out from the rock who looks to be made of metal with this particular skin but that's fine we'll still call it out and knock down these structures does mean there's standing gold on the map that we like to talk about but with a composition that would like to scale uh, it's not great news here for DRX's player possibly caught out of position Kellen getting to work and is going to be help, able to help aiming take him down in the meantime the uh, Baron just getting in amongst it as mom's going to yell real loud it looks like D-plus don't really care to be going towards them doing Nash. Look and at how look, much vision yeah. they have. And this is the benefit that they get from having Pryo. Showmaker obviously shoves in lane permanently. There's no turrets for DRX to hide behind. I'm pretty sure this is gone. And if you can't 5v5 with this DRX comp, you're not going to be able to win. It looks like now they might have some sneaking suspicion, but they don't have a Scryer. And, like, D-plus just know everything. There's the kickback onto Satab. He's taking a lot of damage, but Lucid is now on the front line as the Baron is going to kill the center before the Dawning Shadow. Not sure whether it's actually going to matter, though, as now Kellen's just moving towards them like a freight train made out of catfish. Pleta gets over the wall, but I just don't think Sponge is going to be so lucky, and even Pleta could be in trouble as Kellen is a catfish possessed right now on this Tom Kench, just diving forward. They stop the back. D-plus now starting to dodge a lot of these abilities. DRX a bit torn between holding on to mid-pressure as, okay, dashing forward is Kingen. Not going to be able to find too much more. That is just mid-control. This time has to really respect uh, oh, yeah. what Teddy's capable of here. See, they don't want to run the risk. Showmaker going to be trying and looking for these repeated mantra cues as Lucid does actually have good itemization. Is all Kingen. Yeah, Kingen might be caught out of position. He is going to be able to dash back, but they get the ult out of Sponge. Actually kind of meaningful here is now Kellen on that front line as well. He's an extra tank. It's not just King, and now he gets the big shield from the Dawning Shadow. Pletter is going to be the first one to go down. Massive knockups into the back line as Mom gets angry, and you can understand why. King and now will find the knockback onto Satav. This dragon starting to get angry and is trying to flap his way out, but it's a double instantly, and Kellen licks up the last one. D plus will easy. Um, and oh, we gotta tell oh. TP. Here we go. Rock is gonna make it happen. Dawning Shadow flies in, but Aiming's already killed Pleta, but he's dead. Mom comes down. And now Teddy is going rampant. It is going to be the Abyssal Dive, and uh, the base might be over. 
Uh, but they're going to do their very best. King and doing some work here. My god, Sponge just evaporated. What happened to the Zinzao? All right, next is turret number two. Now falling lower and lower. It looks like D+. Plus. Don't even need aiming for this one. There is the flash kick. And Teddy's in trouble. King is going to be able to lock that one up with the power of Cassante. Rascal, the next one to fall. The Nexus, an option as Saytab is on the fountain. And there it goes. Game three will be a D-plus victory. And they are celebrating because they just played the longest series in Lowell Park history to date. We have never started a series. These were some of the best highlights from today's LCK 2024 Spring Split matchup. Which moment was your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. This is OP, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.